Hey guys, this is Josh Sewell from Sewell Studios. Welcome back. Today I want to talk to you about the new release of Isotope RX-8. I've been a longtime user of the RX series. It has saved more than one project that may have been recorded in a you know less than ideal environment. I've been able to save noisy guitar tracks, a lot of hiss on a vocal, etc. which you guys know if you've used this before. And so I literally just downloaded the trial of RX-8. So I'm going to take some real world examples of where I would normally use it and try out some of the new features. And let's take a look. All right, the first thing I want to try it on is I recorded an acoustic guitar a couple of weeks ago. And as with a lot of acoustics, you know, you like to get a nice bright sound and sometimes with fresh strings and things that you you know like to have for a new session you really get those squeaks when you're sliding up and down the neck and for whatever reason i'm really sensitive to those even in some commercial releases it once i hear it I, it's like i can't stop hearing it it really bothers me so i'm going to take a section here first of all let's bypass the plugin and let's hear this section that i know had pretty significant squeaks So you can hear, you know, in between the chord changes there. Uh, let's go to the default setting here. And it, it loads on the uh, squeak setting. So let's see what that does. Okay, so I think if I had to guess, these are longer than uh, you know what you might run into. So I'm gonna to switch to the long setting and see where that gets us. Okay, uh, sounds like it's working a little bit too hard. So I'm gonna to switch to the uh, ear here where you only hear the squeaks to help dial the um, sensitivity and reduction in. All right, so that is picking, you know, picking out exactly what I need to reduce. So I'm just going to start with the reduction all the way down and kind of bring that up and see where it takes us. Let's go back. It's like on that default setting, I mean, it's completely getting rid of the squeaks, but you're hearing the artifacts of that removal. So I'm going to keep tweaking here and see if lowering the sensitivity will help get rid of that. I tried lowering the reduction earlier, but still wasn't quite happy. So let's take a different approach here. guys maybe um leave me a comment if i'm not using this the proper way but I, that's not something i would see myself using I, I usually would go in with the volume automation and just dug down the squeaks or you know maybe automate an eq i mean on the lowest settings it, it's still reducing it so i could see it being helpful in a, a full track you know being able to hide the artifacts but 
this particular song was like an acoustic and vocal, so I, I would not have been able to use this from what I can tell. But again, if I'm missing something, let me know. All right, let's move on. So next up, I've got a piano that's uh, the right hand that's playing the lead line that can, can really poke out at times. And so I'm going to see if there was a new feature that would kind of help the, the front end attack kind of bring those down. So I want to see how that works on this piano. And so in the example Isotope gave for this, this pick feature, it, they're using a really like a tacky acoustic, sort of a lead acoustic guitar, but I'm going to try it on the piano because this is an album I'm working on right now that would be great if this would work on. Let's engage the plug in. It sounds like it's just grabbing those uh, parts right on the front, which is really what I would want. So I'm going to try to push this one and see what the artifacts sound like. So I'm actually digging this. It's almost like it's a uh, mixture of like a, a transient designer and maybe a really tight Q, dynamic EQ or something catching just that front end. It's really softening the piano up, almost taking it, you know, from a, a grand into more like a, a felt kind of territory, which could be useful. So I'm going to play around with the attack now, maybe even speed that all the way up and just, you know, see how far we can push this thing. So obviously that's, you know, full tilt, fastest attack, all the way up sensitivity, all the way up re reduction. But it's kind of cool. You know, I'm not really hearing a lot of the undesirable artifacts that I heard on the, the squeak section. But the cool thing is for this, it's, it's bringing out the sustain again, similar to what a transient designer can do. It's, it's really clamping down on the front end, but not in the way a compressor would, because I've actually been messing around with this project and a lot of the compressors aren't, they'll grab certain notes, but then some of the most offending frequencies are kind of leaving alone. So uh, this is, can get in the range of where plugins can be really useful, where they can do something that maybe a piece of analog equipment couldn't do. Uh, so this is exciting. I, I like this. Okay, so I have a song called Clear, which uh, I do my solo music under the name Mid-August, so pardon the shameless plug for my music here. But I did stems when I mixed this project, so I've got the full mix here in RX-8. I want to see how it handles the stems, and then we can compare against the actual stems that were done the traditional way in Pro Tools. When you're previewing, the quality is is going to be less. I mean, it's doing it in real time. It, it seemed to have a hard time with the ooze in the beginning. And then once it got down to the verse, which the music is broken down and it's more 
you know, traditional vocal. It, it, it grabbed those pretty well. You know, honestly though, I need to just export the, these in the, the best way that they can. And that's going to give us the true answer to what we're looking for here. Because really the preview mode is, is interesting, but it's not going to be the final product. It's going to take 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, which, hey, if they can pull this off, uh, it, can, it can take 10 minutes, no problem. I'll let this run. I'll be back in a minute and we'll do the final comparison between the actual stems that I made and what RX-8 is able to do here. All right, be back soon. Okay, guys, I'm back with the results of the stems. So within RX, I have pulled up the stems that it generated under its best possible settings. And then I have imported the original stems that I did in a traditional sense where in your session, you know, you solo the group of instruments that you want for that stem and, and bounce that mix. So the ones that I can compare are the vocal the drums and the bass because of the way that RX separates, it has those categories and then other, which is in this song, acoustic and electric guitars and keyboards. But when I did the original stems, I had the acoustics and electrics and keyboards separated. So, but anyway, we'll have enough here to give us an idea of the quality that RX is capable of. So let's check it out. First things first, let's go with, uh, I think let's start with drums. With the first example here, this is going to be the version that RX generated. So this is the RX percussion or drum stem. And here is the original stem that I made in Pro Tools. All right, let's check out the bass. Here is the bass stem from RX-8. And here is the original bass stem. And last but not least, let's check out the vocals. Now the uh, stem that RX makes, they grab uh, all vocals, lead and background. The original stem I made was just the lead vocal. So there'll be that difference there, but we'll still gain some valuable information out of this. It may be it's all just a little much. Well, I don't know, can we turn these dreams into something we can see? And the original lead vocal stem. And maybe it's all just a little much, well, I don't know. Can we turn these dreams into something we can see? My initial reaction is that 
I mean, this is interesting. It's very ambitious, I think, of anybody to try to take a full mix and separate anything useful out of it. That's, you know, crazy to me. But as far as this replacing uh, the time-consuming work that it takes us as mix engineers to make stems, uh, this is not a practical solution. And the reason being is that usually when we're doing stems, it's because the song that we're working on needs those for film and TV placements, commercials, things like that. Well, when you're submitting stems for those projects, if they pull them up and they have all these artifacts, I mean, it's just not going to be a good look for you. So I will continue to do stems the traditional way. I mean, it does take time, but it's worth it not only to have what the music supervisors and audio editors need, but also so that you've got a good high res archive of your song if you ever need to rebuild it. Maybe you don't have the same gear that you had when you mixed it, that kind of thing. So, uh, but I, I don't want this review to come across negative, even though there's some parts that you know didn't really jive with what I'm wanting to do. Because like this, for instance, if I were still in a band and we recorded rehearsals like my old band used to do, I would take the recordings and split these out quickly at the end of practice for everybody to take their stem home and learn their part better or to be able to hear themselves, you know, what they did right, what they did wrong. In addition to that, I know there's a lot of people in cover bands and I could imagine taking some of the songs that you have to learn for a wedding or a party and being able to split it out. And, you know, it's not going to be like we heard there's artifacts associated with it. It's just there, there's no getting around it, at least at the current level of technology that we have. But I think it could be helpful enough where you could pull out even to learn background vocal parts or a specific bass line or something. You know, it had them separated enough where there is some useful information there. So anyway, this has been a real in-depth deep dive on RX-8. I hope you found it useful. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up because I know it's getting kind of long. But thank you for taking the time to watch. While you're here, if you will, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell so you'll be the first to know when the next video comes out. All right, see you guys soon. Thanks.